Hello, welcome to Mountain Craft Studio. My name's Christine. Come on in and I'll show you what I've been working on. I hope you've been enjoying your holiday season. Things have been busy here at the studio. I have several finishes that I would like to share with you. Um, I'll show you what I'm working on currently. I'll show some plans, what I'm working on uh, in January, hopefully. And I'm even going to share a few quilts at the end, uh, a few of my Christmas quilts. I'll do a, I'm gonna try to do a, a kind of a, a bed turning. We'll see how that goes. It may all collapse uh, in my face. Who knows? But it'll be exciting to find out. So first up is my uh, Be Thankful Always sampler. It's Miss Mary Yerger by Just Stitching Along. I, I was stitching this in my last episode. Uh, this is a freebie that you can find on her website. It, um, I think it's been out for a year. I think she let it, released it, but not this previous Thanksgiving, but the one before that. And I just wanted to show how amazingly this fit into this old frame that I've been carrying around for 30 years. <laughs> like it was made for it. Like it's just crazy how much this perfectly fit. This justifies everything I have ever hoarded in my life. Things do come in handy. I may need them someday, so to fit perfectly. I just can't, I just can't get over it. I love it. Anyway, this was a fun stitch. It's gonna go into the cabin and live there. I think it'll be perfect. Uh, and it'll actually give me some holiday decorations that I desperately need. The next thing I wanted to share, uh, I was watching um, some floss tubes and I saw several people with this design and I just decided I couldn't resist any longer. So this is uh, the Primitive Merry Christmas Pillow uh, by Abby Rose Designs. It was a very quick stitch, very easy, um, very fun little stitch. I did this with the called for colors on the called for fabric and then I just added some fabric from my stash to the back and stuffed it with uh, lizard litter and there it is very cute I'll just stuff this in with some of the things that go to the cabin as well and then what I'm uh, really enjoying and the reason I'm trying to get this done today is I need to wrap some gifts so I actually finished the uh, jewelry box for my older granddaughter um, I think it turned out really well it's very cute. This was in the, um, it's Blackbird Designs. It's called Dear August. It's in a book, but I can't remember the book title name. Um, it, maybe it'll hit me here in a minute. Uh, but I just put the, uh, I just wrapped it, laced it, glued it down onto the top of the box that I uh, found at Hobby Lobby. Um, Rooster Ribbon and then put that around the edge. And on the inside, you can see it has a mirror for the, and the bottom pieces are a chenille type fabric um, 
faux velvet kind of thing uh, that I made little pads for, like you would see on the bottom of a jewelry box, and put those in there. And then each of my granddaughters, I also bought a necklace off Etsy, which I will link in the description box below where you can where you can get these. These they did a wonderful job and they came really quick. But they each have their name on a small necklace that will be wrapped inside their jewelry boxes. And so I think they turned out great. This one is for the older granddaughter and this is for the seven year old. And uh, I think they're gonna be really happy with them with their little necklaces. I hope anyway. I was pleased with how they turned out. Uh, let's see. The other thing that I'm working on right now, some of you may recognize these from many, many moons ago, uh, it is the Eat, Drink, and Be Merry Victorian motto uh, paper. I don't know. What, what is that called? The paper? Anyway. Uh, it will look... Something like this. I bought this kit years ago. We had a, a brick Victorian in town um, and I was thinking it would be the perfect thing for my dining room there. And I've moved twice since then. <laughs> I don't have a Victorian dining room anymore, but I have a place for it. So I need to just get this finished. And the, the threads are beautiful. Um, again, it's the Victorian motto sampler shop. I know that everybody uh, or pretty much everybody in the cross stitching world knows knows about them. I'll be anxious to get this finished because I actually have a frame that's going to be perfect for it, and it's the old Victorian type frames. So I really am working on right now. I'm focusing on getting things done that I already have the supplies for the finish. Uh, I would like to get those done and finished and up and not taking up space in the studio anymore. Uh, the next thing that I'm working on is this GGR pattern called Anne Gould, I believe. She was five years old. Yeah, five years and six months old when she did this little sampler. It's a darling. Uh, I wanted to focus on getting some samplers, some small samplers, uh, finished for the cabin. I'd like to do a little wall of samplers down there. I just started this a couple nights ago. The colors are gorgeous. I love these colors. They are just absolutely fantastic. Love them. Love them. Um, so my goal is to try to get this done in January. It's not a large sampler um, and I think that's probably doable except the next project that I have is probably going to take up a lot of time. So we'll see. We'll see if it happens. This will be this may have to get pushed to the side a little bit because I actually have big plans to finish that uh, Harmony box, some, something Harmony, uh, by uh, Katie Strachan. We have, I have finally received all my threads. Yay, my silks. And it's using the Modern Folk Embroidery Forget-Me-Not sampler and then wrapping it around a wooden box and it looks amazing. Hers is done in red and it's fantastic. I wanted to do something different. I really want mine, uh, my style is much more old. Um, her, she has a very gorgeous, sparkly and new and shiny uh, style on things that she makes and they're stunning. Uh, but for me, I'm much more simple um, and old, used, thrift, I guess thrift store maybe it would be my style. I don't know. Anyway, my plan is to make it look a little bit more of a inherited antique or something like that. So I'm still using the same fabric, the same uh, Russian tea cake, I believe, was the fabric color. But I, then I'm going to use the black and the gray silvery um, threads for the stitching. I also have uh, some vintage, I didn't think to bring it, uh, some vintage trim that I'll be using that definitely uh, 
will help give it that old-ish look. And I have some silk that I've had laying around for years. It was part of my, uh, it was supposed to be part of a costume. I was gonna line a cloak with it. Uh, it never happened. Um, so I have lots of this to use up. So I may, I could probably make about a hundred boxes with this, but at least I'll use a little bit. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be fantastic. It'll be fun to do. I'm not going to get, um, I'm not going to set any timeline on that. It's just something that I want to just enjoy. And when it's finished, it's finished. I think that'll be great. Uh, the other thing, it's rolling away. The other thing that I have uh, that I want to do for the new year is um, some Christmas ornaments. I noticed Christy at Crush Hatch, Cross Hatch Quilts and Lori, I think it might have been Lori Holt that started it. She said that she was going to reserve the 25th of every month to work on a Christmas project. Um, and I think that's brilliant. I actually, uh, I'm definitely going to jump on that bandwagon. And my plan is to do one ornament per month. Um, this is the Prairie Schooler uh, Barnyard Christmas. I don't know if you can see that through double pieces of plastic because I, I have it in my fanciest, fanciest uh, project bag right now. Uh, there it is. The Barnyard Christmas. I just love these. They're so classic. They're beautiful. I have a farm. I love it. I think will be perfect. And the only way I'm gonna stay motivated to get this finished is if I have peer pressure. So I'm definitely gonna join in on that stitch along uh, and use this pattern. I also have lots of quilting that needs to be done. My, uh, we've just recently moved into this farmhouse and I need, I actually need some different quilts for the beds. <clears throat> different sizes so than what I already have. So I ordered the Pam Buddha has a new collection of fabric called Farmer's Daughter that I absolutely love. I had pre-ordered this the minute I saw it I, I knew this is exactly what I want. Um, our master bedroom is painted kind of this reddish color. Actually that's the name of the color. It's reddish. Evidently, they got tired of coming up with new names. Um, and I am going to use the red crinoline quilts pattern, uh, Sally's quilt. And I'm, I think it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. It was almost like this, these fabrics were designed for this pattern. It's gonna be great. So this is gonna be a major focus in the new year once Christmas is over. And I'm going to show you, now I'm going to take you to try to show you the bed turning. I have, I don't have a lot of Christmas quilts, but I have a few uh, that I put out. I don't really, I don't do necessarily Christmas per se. They're all um, red and green quilts that can be Christmas. I don't do, I like to decorate more for the season than I do for specific holidays. And so none of these scream Christmas as far as they don't have Santas on them or gifts or anything like that, but they definitely are red and green and styled for this time of year. So I'm gonna take the camera and move things around and I'll bring it right back. Okay, so the first quilt I wanted to show you is a little log cabin quilt. This was designed uh, the pattern was by Joe Morton, and I know that, um, I want to say, Bonnie, I think, the Log Cabin Stitcher has one that is always behind her in her videos that I've seen, and it looks to be exactly the same. It's one of my favorite. It was a really cute, uh, quick, I love the Log Cabin block. It is definitely, that and just the simple nine patch are my favorites. I will always love them, and I'll never make enough. Uh, the next one, this was, uh, I want to say this is also a Joe Morton pattern. I cannot remember which book it was in, but it's definitely in one of them. So this uh, was a fun one. 
I had some leftovers from the other quilt behind it and I wanted to practice my long arm quilting at the time. This was a, a long time ago. And it was my, I think it was the first one I did using rulers. So that was just a little fun one. The kids now use it, the grandkids use it to, to play on. This quilt was definitely a long time ago, at least 12 years ago, maybe more. Um, that I made and it was I wanted just to learn to do the paper piecing um, where you flip it back and forth in order to get the precise um, edges and things like that I just did it to see if I liked it and it was all right it's not something I want to do for every quilt but it, it definitely gives you precise piecing uh, but this is one the it doesn't really scream Christmas but if you look at it these are actually poinsettias in this fabric um, so it's, it's Christmassy, but it's not Christmassy. You could leave it up. People would never notice those poinsettias, I don't think. So then there's this one. I do not remember the name of this one to save my life. Um, this was really, really early in my quilting, uh, career. I remember it was a quit, a kit at a quilt store in Indianapolis, Indiana. It was one that each of the blocks is different. And so that was a good learning for me when I was, I was still trying to piece, uh, figure out piecing and all that sort of thing. And then I hand quilted it and it took forever. So, and it's really not all that heavily hand quilted either, but it was a, a very, very early um, quilt. I still like it. It's still pretty, it's still my colors. I actually leave this one up all the time because this is uh, basically the colors in my living room. I just, uh, I didn't really realize until recently that I do pretty much decorate for Christmas all the time. So I'm ahead of the game. <laughs> uh, this is an antique quilt that I have. I, res bleh, I rescued this one um, from a antique slash thrift store. Um, I've done that a lot. It was, it's all hand quilted. It is old. Um, you can tell by the backing that it is definitely old. I'm not sure who made it, where it came from or anything like that, but I really, really like it. I even like the fact that it has some of its burgundy, some of its red. I think probably when it was first made, maybe those matched a little bit more. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it was always done intentionally this way, but I just, I really, really like it. It's very thin for a holiday quilt or a winter quilt. Uh, and it has some challenges here and there. Uh, but I do like it. I, I just, just one of the, it's a unique pattern, um, dressed in style pattern. So I really, really enjoy this one. And finally, this one is not a quilt, obviously. It's just the top. The, I believe that it was actually used and never intended to be finished. I think that they just used it as a tablecloth. The edges around are stitched as well uh, to be finished. So I think it was used as a tablecloth and I think that explains there's a couple of stains here and there. So I've had it for several years now, de debating on whether or not I was going to hand quilt it or not. And right now I kind of am still leaning towards leaving it the way it is and um, following their lead as far as using it for a tablecloth. But we'll see, maybe someday I'll get enough gumption to, to get it quilted. I don't know, I have a lot of projects that I need to <laughs> do hand work on. So probably not, but anyway, that's, that's my, holiday quilt collection and I hope you enjoyed it. I, uh, I have others that I need to finish. I don't know if they'll ever get done or not, but uh, I have them kitted up and ready to work on. Uh, I'm just waiting for the extra 24 hours in every day to show up. So my collectible of the day is my mustard colored sewing box. The 
it's on a stand, obviously. The, I love the shape of these. There's plenty of room in the bottom. You can actually keep all kinds of stuff, whether that's your, your hand stitching, uh, or you could use it for knitting or anything. These were really, really popular. I see them all the time here in the Midwest anyway. Um, I liked this one because of the color. It really works with some of my other um, pieces inside my living room. I like that it also has this little tray that you can keep things in. Right now it's storing all of my needles and whatnot and a pair of scissors that I'd forgotten all about. <laughs> so, uh, this one you can find anywhere, pretty much. I love it. It's easy to pick up and carry wherever you want to take it. Um, and it's a, it's a great sewing piece. So in the end, I just want to say happy holidays to all of you. Thank you for stopping by for just my quick update on what's happening in December here at the studio. If you wanted to join me for the uh, stitch along for next year, I happened to buy an extra copy of the Barnyard Ornaments. I liked it enough that I bought it twice. So if you would like to do this as well, just leave a comment in the underneath um, and use the word barnyard in your comment so that the random generator uh, can choose your uh, choose the people who actually do want to win this particular uh, chart obviously do all the things that we normally do no uh, don't use the word giveaway or contest or any of that kind of stuff um, because we only want people who actually want this chart to show up in the comments um, and yeah and then you can go ahead and do this with me it'd be fun like I said I need some peer pressure to get that finished uh, I'd love to be able to have a tree out here in the studio I actually have an extra tree that the previous owners left behind um, but I'd like to have a, a tree with all stitchy things on it I think that'd be really cute see you next year